what it did give me is like one percent more hope that actually Maya, what if it is possible? What if everything that everyone's been saying, fine, they have their views, they have their opinions, but what if you can do it? Fake it till you become it instead of fake it till you make it. Because I think if you just yeah. if you just say this is how you want to be and you keep saying that yeah. and then acting in that way for a long enough period of time, you do yeah. become that person, yeah. even though in the beginning it can feel like this is weird and I actually believe what I'm saying. But if you just yeah. keep going through the process of doing over time, you do just become. We see all this like you are good enough or, you know, I love myself or believe in yourself. I think it's a bit of rubbish. And I tell you why you can't get rid of those negative beliefs completely. And we actually shouldn't, we are human. But what we can do is I see it like we've got two, two options, right? Um, think of it like speakers. I like thinking of your beliefs like speakers. Now one speaker is quite loud, which is that I'm not good enough. Then you've got the other speaker, which is I am good enough. Our job is not to just like get rid of that one, but to make this a little bit quieter and make this one louder. And in your brain, what does that actually look like? You have two roads, two, two neural pathways. One, the one that you've been driving on is saying, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, she's prettier than me. Then the other pathway is saying, no, I've got this, I can do it. I feel you know, unique and confident. And the point is, drive more on the belief that you want. But the point is, half of the time, we're not even aware of them. And so I like seeing it as speakers because then rather than this like big job of like, just get rid of that belief, instead, See, is how can I quiet down that belief and make this one louder? So my question is, is how? Because if some people's speaker is so ramped up in the negativity side of things, it's at 98%, maybe there's a 2% a there of, of the positivity. How do, you, how do you turn this down and turn that up? So I think obviously like this really depends on the person, right? And a belief is gonna be more deeper if it's more historical. So if you're young and whether it's your teachers, your parents have been saying certain things to you, it's gonna be so ingrained in the brain. And if that's the case, that does require rewiring. It does. You have to be aggressive with that type of training, which is why these days people are like, oh yeah, psychedelics, things like that. I'm not a huge fan. I think we can actually do it all with our brain. I really do. Yes, it might take longer, but that's all that's happening, right? You are taking that belief. And that's why I'm super passionate about visualization because you can actually rewire it. And I had beliefs in my life that ruined me, like ruined me. And- Hang on, can you share what you yeah, mean you by mind? that? Yeah, so I, um, so let's think, when I was young, I was super confident, very bubbly, and I was training nationally for badminton. So like sport was a huge part of my life, very healthy. Um, you know, you're one of those people where people be like, oh, you're gonna go super far, that sort of thing. Uh, like you've got loads of potential. And I had that belief, like I did, and I was gonna go far. And then um, when I was about, yeah, like 15, I started developing symptoms where um, basically my stomach started hurting, I'd go to the loo and there'd be like blood and things like that. And at 15, it's like, okay, you just go to the doctor, you listen to what they say and you take medication, fine. Um, and as time went on, it became a lot worse because I didn't really change anything in my life. I just kept being quite stressed and emotional, et cetera. And eventually it just meant that I'd been in hospital maybe like six times. I'd been on steroids like every couple of months, which is really dangerous at that age. Um, but the symptoms were like awful because you're going to the loo like um, maybe 30, 40 times a day and it's wow. just pure blood. And you yeah. are you are like screaming for your life because, well, I wasn't even screaming because I didn't have the energy to like cry or scream. And then, you know, the pain of it is like razor blades in your in your gut. Like it's just, there's no relief in any way. You couldn't drink water. Like food was just out of the question. Um, so and you were just like on IV drips for? Like, yeah, there was a point I was like 17 and I was about 36 kilograms. Wow. wow. Like, so went on for yeah, years, I, yeah. yeah, well, no. So it went on for about six and a half years um, because with, so I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory bowel disease and there's no cure. There's just no cure. And they will put you on immunosuppressants, steroids, et cetera. So I was on about 64 tablets every day for about two and a half years. Yeah, I'm still going to school, doing my GCSEs, like no one knows as well. I'm just, I'm doing it all in secret because it was such a shameful, I don't know, no one talks about pooing, right? So 
I'm a young girl and I'm having to deal with this every day. I just was like, it broke me. And so when I come to the beliefs, every single doctor, bear in mind, UK doctors, American, um, Indian, I traveled like the whole world to try and find someone to help me. And every single one said, Maya, I'm just so sorry. Like you are going to be sick the rest of your life and there is no cure. So my belief was right, Maya, you are gonna be sick the rest of your life. Like you can't walk again. You can't play badminton again. You can't live a normal life again. So all these beliefs, they were so strong in my mind because that is what I was told by everyone who were meant to trust, right? Even like people close to me were like, yeah, Maya, we just, we've got to accept it. So my brain was wired to believe that actually, no, I can't really recover from this. Like I will just have to, you know, live my life in hospital or deal with it that way. And the first time I really saw my belief change was the one specifically about not being able to walk again. So I'd not walked for about two weeks in hospital, just like, you know, I'd lost all kind of function to, because of the weakness as well. And, um, then I started uh, practicing mental rehearsal in hospital. And the first thing I did was I would- Did you get this from anyone, sorry? Yeah, so yeah. a nurse, she walked into my room and she was like, um, she could tell I was like, I was mean. Like, I hated the world. I was so resentful. Like, even my sister would walk into the room and I'd just be like, gal, like, I see you and I just, mm. I, I hate it, I hate it. I was so bitter to the world. And this nurse came in and she was like, okay, like, you know, if you weren't in hospital, like, where would you be? And I was like, that's so rude because I'm obviously in hospital. Like, why, what are you, what a weird question. When she left, I kind of just tried it. I was like, okay, what would I want to be doing? And the first thing was walking. And so I closed my eyes and I mentally rehearsed, literally just walking in the hospital hallway. That was it. I hadn't done it in a while. And I just wanted to see, okay, just see myself doing it. And I'm not saying as soon as I did that, I was like, you know, all good to go. But what it did give me is like 1% more hope that actually, Maya, what if it is possible? What if everything that everyone's been saying, fine, they have their views, they have their opinions. But what if you can do it? And so every day, I just kept doing it. Obviously, you've got a lot of time in hospital. So every two minutes, I would just like close my eyes, see myself walking. <laughs> then it would be like hiking. Then it might have been like running. And eventually I did start doing it. Eventually I was training my mind and body to go towards that, to be stronger and motivated to do that. And then we build the competence because then I was actually taking a few steps. And I was like, okay, we can do it. Bring in more visualization, bring in more walking. And that belief was rewired because I didn't walk first and then you know, had the belief I could do it. I was like, Maya, show your mind and body that you want to do this and you can. And it went from there and the same things like being sick all my life or, you know, little things like even, you know, you're only worth it if you achieve X, Y, Z. All those beliefs I'm actively rewiring. Yeah. And I'm not saying they just go away, but these beliefs are way louder now that my, you are healthy and you are gonna stay like that. And you're only getting stronger. That's where I'm putting my brain. And it's incredibly powerful then the results you can get from that. I love what you said about um, saying, okay, well, you've got your opinion, that's nice. I can have my own opinion and that's something that I always try to do and encourage my clients to do. You can't, well, in my experience, you can't just poo-poo something that your brain's been telling you for 10 years yeah. and, and say, I'm just not gonna listen to that anymore. But you can say, okay, thank you for that and just move on. Mm -hmm. And I think bringing self-awareness to hearing that even out loud and realizing that that's constantly on replay in your mind is such a powerful first step and just realizing yeah. you don't actually have to listen to it. It can be there replaying, but you can say, okay, thank you. And just carry on with your day. Yeah. And it sounds like that was a moment that actually happened in real life where you were yeah. all these doctors saying this stuff to you and you realize you don't have to have the same opinion. <laughs>